Hey, welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your podcast host, Jen Liddy. And if you have been around me any length of time, you know that I'm always talking about how we can make our content um, easier for us to create by leaning more into our personality, our strengths, our you basically. One of the elements of that is knowing a bit about where we get our energy from and whether we're introverted or extroverted or something in the middle and how to be in an online world, especially if you're an introvert, is what we're actually going to dive into today. And I'm really excited because I have found that so many of my audience members and most of my clients are introverts and they find content and marketing you know, it's, it's a noisy place online. So today I have Tara Reed. She is a business and marketing coach, but she specializes in working with what she calls introvertpreneurs. And we are going to dive in. So Tara, thanks for being here today. I really am excited to have this conversation. I think it'll be really eye-opening and freeing for people. Yay, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Tell me a little bit about what your background is and how you wandered into this lane of the online highway. Um, I started a long time ago. It was like 17 years ago now. Um, I started in web design, SEO, and then I actually built a handmade jewelry business that I ended up selling. And through that, I kind of moved into really tapping into helping other people and finding that I really love to do that. Mm -hmm. So for when did you sell your, um, was it an e-commerce business? Yeah. Um, I think I think it was 2020 in 2019 I oh, okay. I put it on hold for a year before I sold it which unfortunately devalued it a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um but yeah I just I, I finally made that official switch and it's been amazing ever since to becoming specifically a business and marketing coach yeah yeah so tell me how did you stumble upon this um lane of really talking to introverts yeah, so it, it's a really personal uh, lane. I feel like I've, and most of the introverts I speak to or work with, they're usually where I was at the beginning of trying to be somebody that I'm not. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when we talk about introverts, we always talk about it kind of in a negative light. I know for me, like growing up, I got called shy or people would ask like, why are you so quiet? Um, and so I always took that to be like, a really negative trait and something that I had to change in order to be successful in business. And once I realized I don't, there are ways that I can make this work for me. Um, and I think a big piece of that was self-acceptance, was stop, to stop trying to change myself, to be more extroverted and accept who I am and that I have different strengths than people who are really extroverted. Oh yeah, and the world needs both. Um... I didn't understand introvertism and extrovertism mm -hmm. until um, probably about 10 years into my marriage. Oh, so God, I oh, like, no, I was in my thirties when I figured this out and I didn't even, I wasn't even, in, didn't really understand it for a long time. Uh, I'm surrounded by introverts, my husband, my best friends, the, the, like my son, everybody is an introvert, but I'm extroverted. And I always felt like, Oh, what am I doing wrong? Why am I, you know, and, and so I read um, Quiet by Susan Cain to help mm -hmm. me understand the world of introverts. And it, it, when I understood how introverts think and work, it just, it made all of my relationships better. And um, it just helped me understand that it, it's not that people are being shy or they're being quiet. It's just that their, their way of plugging into the world is a little bit different. Can you talk about what it means to be an introvert versus an introvert, extrovert in case somebody hasn't done that work yet? Yeah. So for me, I, I always say that I feel like introversion has like a scale. There's slightly introverted and then massively introverted, which <laughs> I definitely am. Um, I also have a little bit of social anxiety thrown in there, but mm. you, you don't have to suffer from anxiety to be an introvert. An introvert just means that you are more of a thinker. You're more in your head. You like think before you speak. Um, you maybe are more soft-spoken, more reserved, but the really big piece is that you get energy in different ways. Like <clears throat> an extrovert, they get their energy from other people. Whereas an introvert, we get our energy from being by ourselves. So you can love being in groups and being like networking and still be an introvert. It just means that you need to go away and like recharge for a little bit. <laughs> like plug your brain in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so let's talk about what we're going to really dive into today is not just what it means to be an introvert online and how to how an introvert can market themselves. But one of your specialties is how introverts really, it's in their best interest to not niche. And I would just love to hear everything you have to say about that. What does that mean to you? Yeah, so I'm definitely a multi-passionate and I've, I don't know if it's, I, I think every, anyone can be a multi-passionate, but I've definitely found that a lot of introverts are because we are so in our head. We have all these ideas. We want to do everything. We have shiny object syndrome. Um, so when somebody says you have to niche down to one thing, we'll do that because we're told to, like I did that several times. But then if you're multi-passionate, you're probably going to find that you get bored after a month or two, and then you feel like you need to burn it all down and start over. So I finally realized that I could stop that. I didn't have to do that. I think niching is is really helpful if it if it's easy for you, if it comes naturally. If you're really struggling to niche down, then you shouldn't. I think it's fine to niche down like each offer. I always talk about like value ladders. So niche down each ladder, but you can still do have multiple ladders. Like I think in my business, I probably have about 10 um, for different people. And it doesn't mean that I didn't do the market research or I don't know my audience. I don't know the offer or who it's for. Mm -hmm. It's just that I've opened up my main business to not be focused on one thing. Can you give us an example of the ladder example that you were talking about from your own business? Yeah, so I have a lot of like 10 freebies mm -hmm. <laughs> on my website and each one is kind of an entry point into a ladder of other offers that kind of work with it. So um, like I have offers around being an introvert and marketing. Um, that one is specifically for my introverted audience. And I also have others that are about like content creation, one that's about SEO, one that's about blogging. And these are all for different people. I also have one for virtual assistants. Um, so my entire business isn't, for example, geared towards virtual assistants, but many of my offers in that one value ladder are. How did this come to be? Tell me a little bit about the journey, because I'm imagining at first that, especially when you stepped into the online space, even though you've been here for a while, um, how did it you hear a lot about niching, niching, niching. Mm -hmm. And I, I have opinions about niching because I think a lot of the times people think niche equals demographic. And I don't, I don't believe in that. Um, I think that there's messaging that you can do around really speaking to a specific person that could be considered niching. So I'm just curious when you started, how did all of this kind of hit you? Yeah, I, I was hit with a lot of the niching messaging, um, told that I had to niche down. So I tried, I at one point niched down to, um, Pinterest management agency. And then I got, I think I had that fully up and running. It was like, we were booked out with clients. And then after about three months, I was like, I don't want to just do Pinterest. This is boring. <laughs> And I, even before that, when I was, I was just doing SEO because people kept coming me, to me for that. But I was like, I mean, S SEO, search engine optimization, it's easy for me. It's almost like a second language. Mm -hmm. But if that's all I'm doing every single day, I just, I can't j just do that. It's just, it, it gets so boring to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a creative person and SEO isn't necessarily creative. It's mm -hmm. more analytical. So that's where I was like, I, I need to stop pivoting and stop switching things up all the time. And I just need to create kind of like an ecosystem of offers where I can tailor it. I can tailor the messaging, but I don't have to tailor the messaging for my entire business. Um, I think that's why I call myself a business and marketing coach too, because it's so broad. It's not like niche down to I'm just a business and marketing coach for introverts because I do have that side but then I also have a lot of offers that I'm like you don't have to be an introvert to want to learn this and That's this so is going to help you so I think it's just important to know like if somebody's listening and because I have a lot of clients that have dealt with this they I'm working with them on boxer coaching and every couple months they're like oh I want to switch to this service I want to do this instead I'm like you're a multi-passionate. You, mm -hmm. you can do everything. You don't need to burn it all down and, and start from zero again when you have a new direction or something new that you want to move into. So then how do you create content if you're, if you're, I'm going to say this, and I don't think this is exactly right, but it's almost like every one of your ladders or funnels 
has a niche for it or a person that it's for or a, a problem that it solves. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's almost like each one of those has its own little niche. How do you market yourself? How do you create content knowing that you've got all of this diversity of, of ways to serve people out there? Yeah. So for me, my, my content is mostly right now blogging. So I kind of look at like each topic or value ladder as like a content pillar mm -hmm. um, that I can rotate through. And then my second main content creation marketing method is email. So, I mean, if, if you were to peek into my ConvertKit account, I have like 300 tags to mm -hmm. really narrow down who is who and who I want to send each email to. Um, so I, I really focus on like segmenting my audience that way, because I know that, you know, I, I don't want to send an email that's talking about um, hey, introvert, when it's somebody who signed up for something else and is not completely not an introvert. I love that. That's so strategic and really great at using the automations and the tools that you have. Um, tell me about, so you're really using blogging and emails, which makes sense given that you're an introvert. That's like your energy can be funneled into writing. Um, do you use the socials at all? Um, I was. I actually uh, left Instagram in June of this year and what haven't gone back like? yet. Tell me all about what that is like. <laughs> oh, it's it's amazing. I don't miss it at Did all. Did you like delete it from your phone? <laughs> no, I, I, I left it as is. I just put up one final post that was like, um, this is goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I told everyone, I'm like, if, if you want to stay connected and get on my email list, grab any of my freebies and because that's where I'm going to um, continue to engage people. I love that. So how often do you send an email? Um, usually two, three times a week. Okay. And then I have a lot of um, sequences set up too. Mm -hmm. And then how often are you blogging? Because I think that blogging really well with SEO can, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. time commitment. Yeah. Um, I was trying for weekly, one post a week. Mm. Um, I've eased off on that a little bit, but I want to get back into the one post per week. Okay. And one of the questions I really wanted to know is, so we, I'd love to hear how niching down is actually detrimental for business growth for introverts versus what it does for extroverts. Can you expound on that a little? Yeah, I think one thing is, is like if you're multi-passionate and you force yourself to niche down because Everyone's like, I've seen this ad so many times about, you know, create your one thing. And I'm like, I don't want to create one thing when I see this ad. Um, so it can really hurt you because you're holding back your creativity. Um, you're not putting everything that you like, all the knowledge that you have out in the world. So you're not making an impact and helping more people that you could help. Um, and with that, growing your business revenue and customer base and it's just not going to feel good. I, I think if if you're feeling like something is, is off or you want to continuously change things up and you're never satisfied, it's probably because you're multi-passionate and you don't have that clarity around what that means for you and what that would look like. So I'm trying to understand. I, I understand the multi-passionate thing. I understand the, the highly creative thing. Or even if you, um, you know, your brain is like neuro, you know, diverse and... How does the introvert and extrovert play in here? Because aren't there a lot of extroverts out there who also feel like I don't want to niche down? I don't want to do just one thing for the rest of my life. How do, where does the introvert and extrovert play in here? Yeah, I think there's definitely extroverts who, who can struggle with that too. I think it's just, I find that it's more so introverts a little bit because we're so in our heads about things. Um, we have all these ideas We're we're like consumers of information. Mm -hmm. So we take in a lot of information and then it's just in our head unless we do something with it. <laughs> so okay. I know for me, sometimes I just, I have to do a brain dump just yeah. to get everything out there. Um, and I think like even a program that I created because I was seeing so many people pivot all the time, um, I called it clarity factor. So four month group program to kind of help people clarify their business, their values, their offers in the way that makes sense for them, um, like with the value ladder thing and having multiple. And I even put on that sales page, I was like, here's what I'm not going to do in this program. I'm not going to tell you to niche down to one thing because I was like, if somebody hears um, clarity, like, oh, she's going to help me get clarity, 
they're probably thinking niche. Mm. Focus on one thing. So I was like, I want to make that clear. This is like the the clarity program for multi-passionates. <laughs> so a lot of times, a lot of times in the online world, there's the, this is the way you do it. Um, mentality that or the like that the, there's a rule and this is the rule and this is what worked and I wish that people could add like a caveat this is what worked for me or this is mm -hmm. what worked for that person um how long do you think it takes an introvert to understand you know from the time they start their business that the way that they're doing it for them is not working. Like, do, is there a lot of comparison-itis? Is there a lot of, you know, um, struggle in this first part of getting started with a business? Um, I'll share for me, it lasted about 10 years. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, and I, huge. and I still sometimes struggle with, um, imposter syndrome, comparison-itis. That's why I probably left Instagram. It just felt like I was, I, I'm a learner too, so I love learning so many things. I think I've I have about probably close to 500 courses or resources <laughs> that I've signed up for or gotten through bundles. Yep. Um, in my list of things, and I've probably only gone through about 15 percent of them or something. Mm -hmm. but That's impressive. I, I have to say <laughs> I don't, I have that many, and I definitely haven't gone through 15 percent. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I feel like with Instagram, like I was just taking in all this information and. It was kind of paralyzing. It also led to comparison, um, like, oh, this person's teaching this. They're doing it so much better. And then I would get in my head about it. So even after 17 years, I still have those thoughts. Yeah. But I would say it was about 10 years until I was realized and had that moment where I was like, I, I need to stop doing it this way because this is what everyone's telling me. And I need to figure out how to make this work for me because I, I was dealing with burnout. I was overwhelmed I wasn't loving my business anymore and I got to the point where I was just like it's it's either I need to figure out how to make this work for me or I'm going to scrap it all and go back to a nine to five desk job where at least I know what to expect and I don't have to show up on video every day yeah I give you so much credit for being in it for 10 years before just kind of saying look I'm going to do it this way um what strategies can people put into place to shift and scale a multi-passionate business without a niche? Yeah, I think the offer value ladder is the big piece. It's like the, the overall strategy. And then once you have that, and I mean, you can start with two, you can start with one and then add in more. Like some of my offer value ladders, they have two offers. They don't have like five offers per ladder yet, but eventually I'm going to continue to build them out. Um, so I think starting simple and mm -hmm. knowing that you can add things, you can flush things out as you learn more about your audience, what they need, um, and how you work the best um, as well. So like for me, I have a membership for introverts and I discovered, I think it was last year, I changed it. So I used to do a monthly group coaching call and a monthly training and monthly content. And I was like, I'm really struggling to create this monthly content. Um so I took a look at the numbers and I was like, the numbers aren't even really looking at it the month that I put it out. So I really dug into wh what do they need? What do they want? What's going to feel better for me? So I added in two Voxer office hours per month. And I mean, the, the introverts love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's so much easier and easy for me to manage my energy by doing Voxer um, responses. Like I can just type them out if I don't feel like even recording my voice. Mm. Um, Ooh, that's so good. So yeah, anything you can, you can do to ask yourself, like, is there something that I can do to make this simpler mm -hmm. and make it feel better for me? Because like you said earlier, like just because something works for somebody else doesn't mean that it's going to work the same way for you. Like I tried that. <laughs> I tried to do reels at, at one point when they first came out and everyone's like, oh, you have to, video is king. You have to do video. You have to do a reel every day. Um, yeah, I tried that and they were horrendous. They were awful because it was super obvious that I was really um, uncomfortable. Yeah. And I, I went back and looked at them and I was like, these, these are just awful. Like, so I was forcing myself to do this. Mm -hmm. I was getting really anxious about it and it was burning me out and then it didn't result in anything because yeah. it was so obvious that Your I was not enjoying myself. It. Yeah. Right. You know, I remember when Reels and TikTok first really hit big in 2020 when everybody was stuck home and 
um, like I don't really love being on video. I love having these conversations and, and I love talking to a person. I hate having to talk to nobody. It just like <laughs> depletes me. And I refused to do them for a long time. And I did it after a year and I still refused to do like the trending audio or to lip sync or certainly not dancing and pointing. <laughs> and now here we are in 2023 and the world is kind of catching up with what I was saying I was doing, which is I'm not doing any of that stuff. But if you wanted to, that's good for you. But it was never going to be good for me. And I feel like the more that we can lean into saying, no, I don't like this. What I'm hearing you say, Tara, is like, I don't want to be on video, so I'm going to write blogs. I'm going to write really SEO rich blogs. And I'm going to strategically lead them to something that gets them into my world so I can nurture them. And I think... Mm -hmm. If we are so focused on the cr getting shit done to just cross it off the list, like, oh, let me make this real so I can cross it off the list, especially for introverts. They're so, it's it's like gonna, you're, it's like you're on your way to Burnoutville, mm -hmm. the fast train to Burnoutville. It's really interesting too. I'll share that um, when I finally made it official and left Instagram, <laughs> Um, I had wanted to for about six months before that. And I just, because I'm a content creator, I had six months worth of content already ready to go. So I was like, well, I don't want to waste this content. So I'm going to schedule it all out. And then once it's done, I'll make a goodbye post. Um, but what really made me make that final decision and like um, tell me that what I'm thinking is the right decision, I went in and looked at my stats, like how many people are actually coming to my website mm -hmm. from Instagram? Like, yeah, maybe they're commenting, they're engaging, they're watching stories, which is fine, but that's not what really matters to me. Mm -hmm. I want to get people to my website. I want to get people on my email list. And looking at those numbers, I was shocked to see that, you know, I was spending 10 times the amount of time on Instagram than I was on Facebook yeah. and Facebook was actually getting me 10 times the traffic so wow. that was like okay yeah I can let this go I can because you know, it's also like everyone says you have to be on Instagram and I know that that is where a portion of my audience is but that's not where that's not a good use of my time yeah. my time is much better spent on blog content optimizing my website doing keyword research um, creating new sales funnels, emails, and all of that. <laughs> I love that. Can you talk a little bit about, so with, um, you know, having a multi-passionate brain and an introverted personality, how do you keep things simple with like, for example, you have 11 kind of um, ways that people can come in. How do you create a multi-passionate business and not get overwhelmed? I think a really big piece of it for me is automations. Okay. Anything that I can automate and get out of my head so I don't even have to think about it. It's already set up. It's already, it's running in the background. It's on autopilot um, is best case scenario. And then I think one other thing that I do is I plan my business quarterly. And so, I mean, some offers or value letters, I won't actively promote them for several months, I kind of rotate through. Um, and I find that that works for me. Like, what do I want to focus on this month? What is something I'm, I want to create or that I'm excited about? And then so I focus on that topic or mm -hmm. maybe a couple ladders, but I don't like promote everything. I think I have 50 digital products right now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not promoting them all at once. Some of them I've never actually promoted. They just live on my website. <laughs> Can we talk about I'm so excited about this idea of the digital products and having it live on your site and like cycling through with intention and strategy. Um, how do you know what to focus on? Because is it like um, you're planning it out quarterly and these are the things that people need right now, or these are the things that are like time wise in the business year? Like, how do you make those decisions? Um, so, usually, both. I look at um, if there's something time wise that makes sense. Um, but then I'm also really big, and this is essential for me, I found as a multi-passionate and as an introvert, is what I call following my energy. Yeah. So I love to plan things quarterly, but if a month comes around and I'm like looking and I'm like, oh, I plan to launch this program, but I'm not feeling it, that's okay. I'll, I can do something else. So I, I make plans, but they're not like set in stone. Okay. And I really need that flexibility. <laughs> so it's being flexible with yourself too. Yes. I yeah. This. this is so much great information. Do you have any other like little nuggets that people should take away, especially if they're introverted, but 
I really think that extroverts can benefit from everything you're saying because a lot of the philosophy that you have in your approach speaks to somebody who's creative and multi-passionate. But um, do you have any other nuggets for us today? Um, I think the the best piece of advice I could give um, to anyone who's listening and is like, yes, this is me, um, is just to really make note of what you're doing right now in your business. Really look at the things that you're doing, um, how they're making you feel, if they're actually getting you results. And then you can start to figure out, okay, is this something that I can stop doing? I can ditch. Um, like I just recently decided that I'm going to be closing one of my memberships because it no longer lights me up. And it's just for several months now, I've been really dragging my feet to do the monthly stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've realized, okay, I've given it a few months. It's not just a one-time thing. I really feel like I need to change this up and yeah. let this membership go. Um, and I think it's also going to allow you to really find your own path because, I mean, that that's like the basis of everything we've said is that what works for one person is not going to work for you. So I think being open to testing different things, trying things out is really the only way you're going to figure out what's going to work for you the best. Yeah. And I, I think that you have, um, kind of, I know that you're anti-niche or you're not like niching, but there is a niche in what you're saying, like people who are introverted and multi-passionate and want to have kind of a diverse array of offerings. Those are your people. Mm -hmm. Right. Versus somebody who's like, no, I have one signature program and I want to do like talks. And your person is the person who's kind of got this like a huge map in their brain of all the things they could do. Yeah. I yeah. Like definitely that. ideas people. <laughs> ideas people. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people get into your orbit, Tara? Um, probably the best place is um, going to my website, thetarareed.com slash everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my everything page, every offer, every freebie. And if you sign up for any of my freebies, you'll get on my email list, which is where I send the most valuable content and fun things. Great. Do you have, did you tell me that you had something that you really thought the, that my audience would love to download? Or oh, yes. Or just on the everything page, they should go there. Um, it is on the everything page, but I'll um, mention it just so it, I, if it resonates. So I do have a free webinar called um, The Four Marketing Methods for Introverted Entrepreneurs. So I kind of cover um, email, blogging, Pinterest, and um, social media, but in a less social kind of way. It's more focused on content creation and attracting people. Okay. Um, and I go a little bit deeper into each of those four methods. Perfect. And then I also wanted to say that you have your own podcast. Can you talk a little bit about that? I do. Yeah. The Introvertpreneur um, podcast. It's actually, um, we're kicking off season three in February and we're actually going to two episodes per week um, this wow. season instead of one. Bravo. <laughs> I know what a lot of work it is, so bravo. That's wonderful. Yeah. Tara, thank you again for coming on. I think that the more people can lean into understanding where they get their energy from and where they're spending their energy. And you've given us a lot of specifics like um, analyze where you're spending your energy and analyze what's working for you. So thank you for that message today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye.